In terms of the new satellites, we have a lot of CubeSats with special purpose instruments. They also facilitate education, both of engineering and science students, undergrad to graduate level, to prepare for future careers in these areas. Uh, the new satellites can provide everything from uh, more intelligent Earth observations. And when I say intelligent or AI-based, that means that some of the science data that's collected can be processed on board the spacecraft so that only high quality data is downlinked. The satellites themselves have higher resolution instruments and data again can be collected at higher bandwidth, processed on board to assure high quality results are downloaded. And then on the ground, new data can be correlated with the rich data sets recorded in the past to improve climate and weather models uh, at all stages, weather being short-term, climate being long-term. I'm really excited about the coordination of ground, air, and space resources all together because each can collect data that has the best resolution and accuracy for different phenomena that are being observed. For example, let's say that there's a hurricane which tends to last long enough that you can deploy assets to different parts of that hurricane. The spacecraft passing overhead can collect regular data with each pass of what's happening from an overhead viewpoint. It used to be that manned aircraft would fly directly at some risk to the people on board into the hurricanes. We now can send unmanned aircraft into those same storms and we don't have the same level of risk to people because the people are not on board. That means we can send more of them. And then if we have storms that go on shore, not only can we take the space and airborne asset models and use those to predict with higher resolution how that storm is going to affect the land. We can also take all of the suite of sensors that you would find on that land itself to have better real-time information. And then even to deploy communication and disaster relief resources in cases like really bad storms based on the data that is much more accurate than it was before. The more data we have, the more confident we are in our models and the greater ability we'll have to predict decade level as well as century level climate change. The decadal level is really important because we can't just look tomorrow and say, oh, it's cold or it's hot. And so we know what's happening to the climate. If we're looking a century out, people don't relate to that because it's too far in the future. But if we can look at the next decade or the next two decades and talk about what's happening to the climate over that scale, that really is meaningful because most of us will be alive over that term and we don't want a future that's not suitable for ourselves and our children. So the better we can do with the big data collection from again, space, air, ground, sea, and put that together in models that really are looking at this decade level climate um, change uh, dynamics, the better we're going to be able to really communicate the results to not only technologists, but others who are influential in our future policies.